When the hardware is so good, sometimes the community steps in to fix that software letdown to make a device truly shine. I took the leap and used this for two weeks as my daily driver, including a road trip into state. My initial thought was, why didn't I try this sooner? I wasted so much time on Oxygen OS. In my previous review of the OnePlus, most of my time was nitpicking on the software experience, but praising the hardware. Yeah, Oxygen OS is great and all, but over time, the experience just got worse. It's RAM management too aggressive, the ambient light sensor poor, and its updates slow and inconsistent. Pixel software isn't perfect either, but paired with the OnePlus hardware, I was hit by feelings of relief, like a burden had been lifted. It felt like a proper pixel experience where everything was fluid and efficient. There were no issues with any of the functions or features either. Able to run all the Google apps without complaint, but also not getting too confused by the OnePlus hardware, like the alert slider and pop-up camera, which I'll get back to. Most importantly, Banking apps and Google Pay had no objections, so I could continue to carry only my phone out with me and still pay for all that travel food. It also passes L1 Widevine certification, so things like Netflix are able to stream in better than potato quality. RAM management was vastly improved too, nudging you to not clear all open apps as frequently as OnePlus. Apps did occasionally have to reload, but it was infrequent and were held on to as much as I'd expect for a device with 8 gigs of RAM, for once. I won't get too into the hardware as that remains excellent as mentioned in my previous review, but I do really want to call out that screen again. Even compared to my Pixel 6 Pro, this full unobstructed high refresh rate display looks amazing and interacting with it just feels satisfying. An added bonus is the Pixel experience finally brings an always-on display to the OnePlus, which was dangled in front of 7 series owners for so long, then pulled just before release. Its addition is fantastic and works flawlessly. The ambient light sensor is much improved too. Still not perfect though, as I experienced one instance of getting confused and bouncing between dim and bright, but the frequency of the issues was far less than what I experienced on Oxygen OS. Getting back to the quirks of the pop-up selfie camera. I mentioned that it works just fine, but it may start getting a bit annoying for some of the convenience features Pixel software uses it for. Firstly, with face unlock. With its default settings, it's a little too eager. Checking in on you if you actually want to unlock or you just moved ever so slightly. It can instead be set to only be summoned for an actual unlock. But unfortunately, if it popped up to check on you as you completed a fingerprint unlock, it wouldn't trigger a retract properly, leaving the little peeper chilling sadly out in the weather. The other feature Pixel software leverages the selfie camera for is making auto rotate actually decent, which obviously isn't ideal for a pop-up and was something I really missed. I know this doesn't affect everyone, but I must hold phones wrong, as the auto-rotate strikes so often when I'm just going about my business. Once these convenience features are turned off though, it goes back to being an old, reliable selfie camera. With the added bonus of giving a bit of extra privacy and peace of mind, knowing exactly when it's being used. Now moving on to the rear camera, its performance was surprisingly decent for a device that's getting on in years. Pixel experience came bundled with basic camera software but we can do better with a port of Gcam. Here are a few shots compared to my Pixel 6 Pro, where the shots taken on the OnePlus lean a little warmer. Gcam is really doing some lifting with the older hardware, and with good lighting, things still look great. As expected though, night mode does fall short. On the subject of falling short, there are a few other downsides with the whole experience. One was the fingerprint reader, which was far less reliable than it was on Oxygen OS. Possibly due to the enhanced security algorithms, which are one part of the Pixel 6 unlock issue. 
I did try registering the same finger twice and even reset and re-register them after a few days to identical results. The other is battery life. Not a fault of the software at all, as it lasted roughly similar to Oxygen OS, which often conked out on me before day's end. Standby battery was even worse, where one night I took it off charge before bed and it managed to squander its positive vibes down to 60% by morning. Admittedly, my battery health isn't as great as it once was. The upside though is that while usually the hardware running this software charges abysmally slow, looking at those slow boy pixels, the OnePlus warp charging is completely intact, able to go from 10 to 76% in 30 minutes to completely offset that overall poor battery life. So yeah, if you've ever thought about pairing better software with this great hardware, I'd wholeheartedly suggest giving it a try. The overall experience was so good without adding any downsides. With ROMs, always be cautious though and keep backups. The process was easy too. A guide will be on the channel shortly, so be sure to subscribe if you want to check that out. I guess I finally found the better software experience I yearned for in my previous review. Thanks for watching to the end as I work to improve things. Chuck us a like if I did alright, and sub to see things get better. Cheers.